Good afternoon. The Governor of College 7 City Council meeting to order. I would like to also recommend everyone who may be tuning in via WA3B 1490. At this time, Councilwoman Jackson, if you'd be so kind to us in the station. Yes, sir. Anybody in here? I'm going to from Council Prayers by the Reverend T. Frank Matthews, chaplain of the Selma City Council in Selma, Alabama. Oh, God, for as much as without thee, we are not able to please thee. Mercifully grant to the members of the City Council the guidance and direction of the, thy Holy Spirit that we may consider impartially, weigh honestly, and act rightfully in accordance with thy will for us on every matter that may come before us, knowing that without thy sustaining power, we can do nothing. For we ask this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, and for his sake, amen. 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 So it's time for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call, Madam Clerk. President Lewis. Present. Councilman Boleyn. Councilwoman Youngblood. Councilwoman Jackson. Present. Councilwoman Benjamin. Here. Councilman Randolph. Councilman LaShore. Here. Councilwoman Thomas. Ready. Councilman Johnson. Here. As stated before, we do have a quorum. The character trait of the month is the sort of thing is finding practical use for that which others would overlook or discard. At this time, council members, you have before you the January 20th agenda. Are there any corrections, deletions? Yes. Yes, ma'am. On, on uh, item uh, number four. Okay. Item oh. number four. We're talking about the regular agenda. Oh, oh, no. Okay. All right. What's that? Okay, we have a motion on the Second. Call. By Councilman the short second by Council Walker. Benjamin is attached. Roll call, Madam Clerk. President Bowie? Yes. Councilman Boleyn? Councilwoman Youngblood? Councilwoman Jackson? Yes. Councilwoman Benjamin? Yes. Councilman Randolph? Councilman Lashore? Yes. Councilwoman Thomas? Yes. Councilman Johnson? Yes. Okay, uh, the vote for the regular agenda was passed unanimously. Council members, you have before you six items for the consent agenda. Uh, I'm going to read all six items and if anyone would like to um, take an item off for individual discussion, you may. I said item number one to approve the legal statement in the amount of $10,373.50. I said item number two to approve the legal statement in the amount of $10,373.50. I said item number three to approve the legal statement in the amount of $10,373.50. I said item number four to approve the legal statement in the amount of $10,373.50. project for the advantage of the normal work. This is about the five chief. Uh, concrete being holes and turning across the street fire station. The Senate item number three to approve the contract for Mr. Fitz to clean up the pet grass on Ward 7. The Senate item number four to approve the contract for Mr. Barbara Walker at $8.50 to work in the public building. The Senate item number five to approve the contract for Councilman Benjamin and Councilman, Councilman Raymond to repair cave-ins and pop holes in the amount of $42,350 in the wards, 45 dollars will finally come from their gas and oil lease funds with woods construction doing the job. And consent item number six to approve, to approve the contract in the office of the clerk of secretary dues for the election process and other dues needed in the clerk of office for city still amount will be by weekly payment of $90. $900 weekly for six months. At this time, Councilwoman Thomas. Yes, I would like to make a, a change here where consent item number four, it was supposed to be been uh, where our attorney, uh, Gamma, was supposed to redo this contract for $10 uh, per hour for public work for Mr. Robert. That's a contract statement. That's a contract statement. No, he's, he did the con he didn't change the contract. We called him and he did, so we have to put this back because of 
Okay. Uh, we have to talk with our the attorney to make the change. Yes. Have you, have you made a provision? No, not yet, not yet. It was brought to my attention about an hour and a half, two hours. Can we do number four pending the, uh, the chain, the chain from 850 to $10? I don't see why it would be a problem. Okay. That's, that's the only change that we can do. All right. At this time, the chair will entertain a motion to place all six items on the consent agenda and vote. So I have a motion on the floor. So moved. Second by council. Woman, Benjamin. Roll call. President Bowie. Yes. Yeah. Councilman Bowling. Councilwoman Young. Councilman Jackson. Yes. Councilman Benjamin. Yes. Councilman Randolph. Councilman Lashore. I vote no. Item one. Yes. On two, three, four, five, and six. Councilwoman Thomas? Uh, yes. Councilman Johnson? I'm out of the same without the court session. All right. The majority of the vote passed for the Senate panel. Now we're down to announcements. Are there any announcements in the award that you would like to bring forth at this time? And then out of that, we will bring forth uh, our superintendent, Dr. Williams, or the Southern Citizen. Councilwoman Thomas, then Councilman Lashore, and Councilwoman Lee. With, with your please. Yes, I would like to bring this uh, announcement to the city of Selma. We will begin Thursday. We have two schools that uh, are part of the Auburn Day, which uh, Mr. Denise Taylor will be back down. The two schools are Knox Elementary and Payne Elementary. And uh, out of this contest, we will be doing Thursday, uh, selecting three posters out of the three schools there to be a part of the other state uh, contests of other parts of Alabama. So I just want people to know that our children in the uh, city of Selma, they're being part of uh, something that's good uh, to give them a chance to be a part of, uh, to do a little traveling after this contest and be a part of this big uh, event that we're having, a part of Keep Alabama Youth. And also, we will be having a uh, meeting uh, this month, uh, let me say the uh, second week of February, uh, on the Tuesday, our uh, award meeting for the first of this year. That's it, Councilman? Uh, thank you, ma'am. Councilman Yes, Mr. President, as you very well know, a petition has been submitted to this council by the residents of Cove Street acknowledging and supporting the street name change from Cole to uh, Ernest L. Tate, who is the first African American police chief in the city of Selma. To my knowledge, the Alabama law that the legislature passed and it may be wrong to not cover streets. However, it, it, it does cover monuments and buildings. Uh, <clears throat> with that being said, we have a public hearing, Mr. President, and I move that we uh, approve the name change from the code street to presentation. Do we have a second? Second. second. Have a motion on the floor by Councilman Bishop. We have a second by Councilman Thomas and Councilman Johnson. Discussion? Councilman Johnson. President Goodwin, I something on the mind that should have been very important to tell the, the citizen in my ward, but I'll wait till after um, Ms. Jackson responds. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, maybe it may turn down for a second. I'm sorry. Did we get any clarification on the law um, whether or not we get the full transaction legally? Well, basically, uh, from my understanding, uh, I talked. I'm trying to please my board here. Because I did ask them to look into it. Right here? Yes, sir. You can hear Good evening, President Wood, Council members. Good evening. To my town treasurer clerk, the mic closer or on? I'm going to pick it up. I need to hold it. So yeah, I'll turn it on first. There you go, look at the clock now. On is usually better. Uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Good evening. I was asked last night at the work session to 
read and re review uh, the Alabama Memorial Preservation Act of 2017, which some individuals believe apparently would be applicable to the action the council is contemplating. That act created a law which says that there's a prohibition on the relocation, removal, alteration, renaming, or uh, other disturbance of any architecturally significant building, memorial building, memorial street, or monument located on public property which has been in place for 40 or more years. I'm not gonna read this whole act to you because most of you don't wanna hear it and probably wouldn't, would be turning back to me asking a bunch more questions anyway. The act specifically does name streets, but it says memorial streets. Now, I see nowhere in the act a definition of memorial street. What's an architectural building or a memorial building or a monument located on public property, which has been in place for 40 years or more, less difficult an issue to define than what a memorial street is. Uh, a memorial street depends on what happened when the street was named. So you'd have to have somebody tell you how Cold Street got named to, to begin with to consider the Memorial Street. That is a place, by the way, in the Act to do just that. The Act calls for a commission to hear uh, the propriety of a change by either the state or municipality political subdivision, including a municipality. That is a place to contact the commission. Uh, and information can then be provided to the commission as to whether or not that street indeed should be presumed to be on the part of the street. But you are going to need some sort of tangible historical documentation, I would think, to say this is a memorial street, or any other street, not just Cold Street, any other street. Every street is named after something, someone, somebody, uh, but the question is why? And I can't answer that, and I don't think anybody else here can answer that right now either. Yes, ma'am. So, let me start off by stating my position um, for honoring Chief Tate. There's no doubt about that, and would love to do it in this manner. However, I would like to, for you to have more time to contact the commission to determine if um, this is something we could do, because if we do it, and then they contact us and say we were wrong, and we have been fined, and we have to change it back. That's a $25,000 fine. Oh, $25,000. Okay, and so if we delay it two weeks um, for you to have that opportunity and then- I would love that opportunity to... and I'm going to seek the assistance of anyone in uh, Bills and Grounds about how the street got named, if we can find it. It may not be possible to find out how the street got named. And if they can give us something great. I mean, I don't want to, this is my colleague's uh, item and I don't want to presume to take control of it, but what I am saying it exists the clarity on the matter will proceed, Michael. Sure. And, and, and Councilman LaShore was one of the people who specifically asked me to do this research, I think, to <coughs> preclude any such thing. To my knowledge, Cole is not in Memorial Street. To my knowledge, nobody in the building today even know how that street was named. I would concur if Cole Street was designated in Memorial Street, uh, that we should hold up. But be it that it, it, it isn't, I'm going to ask my, my colleagues to move forward on approving the name change of Cold Street. And whatever comes after that, so be it. As is your right, Council. All right. You know, this is the second time I'm going to come on. I just want to ask you, what is your recommendation to the Council, your legal position? Because I thought you just said. My legal position is part and part determined based upon what I said a few minutes ago. I don't know who can determine whether or not that was a name uh, as a memorial street name. I don't know where I would go to find that out for sure. I would only start with uh, whatever public works or information or historical data there is. But but how do you find out how every street in Selma got its name? Right. And so the, what you said was there is there a commission or someone you can contact? I thought there no, was no, no. Different. There's a commission that you can go to with a request to review whether or not action you're, you're determined to take uh, will result in a fine. Wouldn't it be, I mean, wouldn't it be prudent, prudent. And, prudent and then get judgment to go to them first rather than ask for forgiveness afterwards? My considered opinion 
is that it would not hurt at all to contact the mission. But Councilman LaShaw is the proponent of this, this, uh, this, this, this act, and I don't want to tell him he can't. I ask for the question. Do we call him? Okay, all right. You know what? The phone? Okay. Yes, and, and, and Councilman is sure in the, in the meantime, it's not like you're buying signs tomorrow. In the meantime, you can find all that out. Absolutely. Okay. All right, roll sure. call. President Bowie? Yes. Councilman Bowling? Yes. Councilwoman Youngblood? Councilwoman Jackson? At this time, I would say no based on the fact we, we don't have permission, we haven't researched, and we're not being approved. Councilwoman Benjamin? Yes, at, at the uh, information given to us by Councilman Ashore and that the information given to us by the attorney and also at the advice that Councilman Ashore has time to go find out that information before signs are purchased. Yes. Councilman Randolph, Councilman Ashore. Yes, Mr. President, I want to thank my colleagues for this point. Oh, a man that has given 34 years of his life to serve in this city and has achieved a major uh, <coughs> Mark has been the first African American police chief here in the city of With that, I'm going to guess, and I'm glad to catch that vote for Chief Ernest L. Taylor. Councilwoman Thomas? I want to vote on based on um, what I just heard the attorney say that, uh, that no one <coughs> can say uh, who the street was named. Cold Street, nowhere names. I said there. I don't know who can say. I who can't can say, say no one. Can say. I don't know who can say. Who can say? So I will. I will vote on yes. 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 Yeah, that's what I said. Yes. Yes. I vote passed by majority. Councilwoman Benjamin, I think you have some announcements. I do. You will? Okay. okay. I do, I do, I do. I pull it out. All right. Uh, the 11th Annual Black Man Hill Symposium, and I may have that annual number uh, wrong, and I meant to give you the dates for this, <laughs> Mr. President, so I can put it up. It's coming up in February. I have the dates on the next agenda, but yes, just be prepared for this. Uh, Madam uh, Superintendent, the young people from Civil City Schools always attend. Uh, it's a valuable, valuable training table for them. Uh, it's the 11th annual, um, and we cover a gamut of topics for our young men in Selma, Alabama. Uh, so this is the 11th annual Black Man Hill Symposium. Uh, the 12th annual Black History Month celebration will come uh, right after that, and I'll have the dates. Uh, I'll have the dates for you all on the next agenda, uh, Mr. President. Okay. Also, uh, Mr. President, because you know I have a copy here and I came without copies on yesterday concerning uh, public public works bidding and public work projects. I wanted to read to this because we had a we have a contract on the consent agenda that had questions that it got to me that there were questions. Because public works projects are specifically exempt from the regular bid law in Title 41 public work projects involving expenditures of less than $50,000 do not have to be bid. For those of you who would like a copy of this, or you can have my copy, uh, you are welcome to. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you. Any other announcements? Please. Councilman. Yeah, I'd just like to uh, announce that there will be a ward meeting, Ward 8, on February the 18th at 5 p.m. at Kingston. Uh, elementary school, uh, February 18 <coughs> at 5 p.m. in Kingston. Thank you, sir. Uh, the topic will be pie holes and garbage. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Councilwoman Thomas, then yes. Councilman I would like to make this uh, announcement to the citizen in Ward 7. Um, I diligently do what the Citizen Ward 7 called on me to. But I want the Citizen Ward 7 to know that we know we have potholes and we know that uh, we have to repair them. But I want to let them know, uh, I've been riding today. Uh, these are some major problems I know that we have, but it takes money. And I just want uh, 
specific to let them know that uh, I am beginning to do a contract where some major park holes are coming off of a broad entering into some of the residents. They are they, they serious need to be fixed, which I will be starting on them uh, next week. So I want people to know that uh, I hear you. I don't avoid your calls. I take your calls and I go out. And uh, I will continue to do as I was served and elected to do to take care of the, the area over there. So I want people to understand it takes time and it takes money. And uh, we don't have that much, but uh, I'm, I am going to take care of that. That's a major problem in my area that I need to address. All right, thank you, Mr. Councilman. Thomas, Councilman LaShore, then we'll move on to Dr. Lee. Yes, my brother, I, I really forgot to bring this up, even though I spoke about it in my work session. You know, we, we all agree that littering was a major problem in our city. We all agree that this indiscriminate uh, garbage dropping by our citizen has to be stopped. And we're going to, I think we have a consensus that we're going to declare war on these people that are littering, as the city of Birmingham has done. And I read uh, a copy of the Birmingham uh, News when they launched a campaign uh, for anti-litter. Uh, this, this, this littering problem in our city has to be eradicated, Mr. President. It's going to create a serious health problem. People have to realize that they cannot just take their household garbage from their homestead and just drive around the city and see nobody's looking and just dump it. We're going to have to just let our citizens know that there are some consequences to their actions. So I'm asking that the citizens declare war on the literals. And I think it was pretty good. <laughs> it's me. He'll <laughs> uh, be back in the spring. I thought I heard you say you was going to write a resolution to that effect. Was that not this? For the war on the Yeah, we got the There will be a resolution to that effect, and we will do public service announcement, letting our citizens know that one, what they're doing is not going to be tolerated anymore, two, what they're doing is criminal activities, and there are consequences to their actions. And we're going to encourage citizens to report what they see. And uh, we're going to talk with the new police chief, and we're going to have a a, a resolution where people are going to have to pay for their deeds. So once again, the list of lawyers to see the civil is not going to tolerate indiscriminately adopting uh, any law. There's consequences to your action, and be aware. Be aware of that. Thank you, Councilman. Councilman, come. Yes, I want to speak on behalf of that. Uh, the city of Selma, no, I have been talking about this, uh, what he's just now bringing up about Birmingham. <laughs> I have brought this before this panel here that that I have requested that we do in resolution or in ordinance because this panel must realize that um, we have we have council people have dedicated and, and been certified to represent the city of Selma on uh, keeping Selma clean. We didn't just start. This has been going on two years. I have been a part of keep Alabama clean. And uh, for many, for the last two years, we have dedicated, and the citizens of Selma, and a lot of the schools, have dedicated themselves to being a part of this. We didn't just start uh, yesterday. Uh, this is our third year, and uh, I brought this before this council before. And I just want to say that uh, I get out there with these groups, and we work in this community. And uh, our city, uh, we do need to have uh, you know, an ordinance or a resolution about Little Free, which we do have ordinance on the book uh, that was placed. But I, I'm speaking because of me, of, of what uh, my colleague, Councilman Shaw, just said. But I brought this months before this, this panel, which I have served this city of Selma on my own volunteer time. Uh, you don't get paid for this. This is volunteer. And uh, when the work is done, I think that uh, we made uh, our city be a part of Keep Alabama Beautiful. And uh, I did put it to the floor before Council Miller Show brought this about Birmingham. Uh, we have people that have been working diligently out here trying to keep the city clean. All right, thank you, Council Thomas. 
Nachman, uh, Johnson, then Dr. Williams. Real quick, Mr. President, um, do the county have some kind of law in place uh, about the garbage? Uh, is they mandatory for that with garbage can? Because I asked that because, like I said, on last week, I did find I caught someone coming from Brandon uh, bringing garbage into our city uh, limits. And as well as before, during the last administration on Ray Street, I, I, I was able to catch some people around in that curb on Ray Street. Uh, like five big bags of garbage in the, on, on, in the race in the, in the and they came from the county. Also, uh, if we declare this war, we definitely need to be able to get uh, the code enforcement back out of there. Uh, we need code enforcement workers back, and um, I don't know where we at with that, if we plan on hiring any of the code enforcement back, but we definitely need somebody to be able to, <coughs> to hit these spots. Um, uh, we had spoke with the mayor about that. Not talking about that. Chief Wolf from the last night, he have uh, hired, I think, four, eight code certified officers, and I asked him to put the code enforcement back in the police department. Mm -hmm. I also in Mobile, and I brought a ticket, you know, yeah. I brought a ticket. I'm yeah. not sure whether this administration or last administration, where Mobile uh, have a literal officer go by, and even if it's on a lot, they see trash or garbage on a lot, they find it. They give you so many days to get that guy in children. If not, they're going to find who the land on uh, of that. So that's something we may look at as well. But uh, uh, whether they put it on a lot or not, you know, they're still responsible. And I had a ticket I brought before the council uh, what Mobile did. So that's something we need to look at, man. So we're going to do it. We got to do it all. Yeah, but I think we need to be making this post. That's right. I have no problem with that. Yes. 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 Right. That, that's right. We're going to do it. Might do it right. All right. Dr. Williams, please come forward. representing Selma City Schools and just really wanted to share a little bit of uh, the goings on uh, for Selma City Schools and as always encourage you um, to, to be involved with us. Um, so you've got uh, two different sheets that's coming around. The first one is called Keeping Up with Selma City Schools, which is our um, newsletter. And I'm gonna go over uh, that first. The second one is, is just information about where to find us on social media. Uh, and including our sports teams, our clubs, and so forth that may have Twitter and Facebook accounts. Uh, so keeping up with Selma City Schools, we are in the process of looking for school bus drivers. Uh, we're very interested in expanding our bus transportation, uh, but in order to do that, we have to have drivers. So if uh, you all know of any, and including our, our listening audience here, if you know of anyone who has their CDL and is interested in driving a bus, please have them reach out to us and the information is on our website um, uh, that includes the qualifications for uh, being a school bus driver. Also, January is board, School Board Appreciation Month and um, I do thank our school board for their hard work and dedication and much like the work that you all do, um, they, they uh, work hard as volunteers and uh, really have a large impact on the work that we're able to get done and I definitely appreciate our school board and I encourage you all if you have an opportunity to say thank you to our school board members, please do so. It's time for pre-K pre registration again. Um, this time seems to roll around rather quickly, uh, but registration did begin on January 15th, and that information is also on our website. Um, so any families out there that have a little one turning four uh, by this fall, uh, please join us uh, with pre-K. And Ms. Cheryl Randolph is our early and social emotional learning coordinator. She can give additional information, uh, but the application itself is on our website. So uh, we would like uh, to get as many folks registered early as possible for pre-K. Uh, so great news to share about our scholars. Uh, we had a number of our uh, scholars participate in the Congressional App Challenge. And uh, this is Congresswoman Sewell's um, District 7 Congressional App Challenge. Last year, we had a team that won first place. This year, we had, um, I think, 10 or 11 teams to participate, and we swept it. 
we won first, second, and third place in the Congressional App Challenge. And so, uh, yeah. We are super, super, super excited about the work that's happening at RB Hudson STEAM Academy as well as our other schools. Um, invite you all to come take a look at it if you ever want a tour or, or just to, to walk around. Please let me know because I would be more than happy to host a school visit with you all. Um, so congratulations to those scholars. First place was Jada Wells with the Bulldog Alert. Second place was Alexis Perry with Classroom 101. Third place was Ashton Young with Selma Tourism app. Um, and these are all usable apps. So these scholars were actually coding programming and creating apps that are actually usable um, and needed in terms of um, getting information. Also, you may have seen some of our scholars from the STEAM Academy at the Maxi Street mural painting. Uh, we had a paint party there a week or so ago. Um, really excited to see how we're beautifying that side of town on East Indy Selma. Um, it's going to be beautiful and our scholars actually designed the artwork and they've got artists who are working closely with them in partnership with Arts Revive and Cougar Oil, uh, the Lynx Incorporated, um, and just to make sure that it is a community effort. Um, and uh, we really look forward to having an opportunity to beautify the city in other ways as well. So this, this is something that I hope will be the start of something that's ongoing uh, for our scholars to uh, play that role within our city. Um, Samaritan's Feet was here last week, and this was our third shoe distribution, uh, one of my absolute favorite times of the year, where uh, this organization out of Charlotte, North Carolina comes and basically gifts our young people with a clean pair of, of socks, new pair of socks, and new pair of shoes. Um, and during the process of it, we greet our, our young people, take off their socks and shoes, wash their feet, um, and then put on clean socks and shoes. Um, and and, and the, at the same time, having conversation with them, you know, learning a little bit about what they like about school, what their favorite subject is. Um, and it's always just a, a time where I just get real joy in my heart just to see um, how excited they are uh, about getting their new shoes. And we did this for all of our kindergarten and first graders um, throughout the entire district. Um, one upcoming event that I want to announce is our family engagement night. This will take place on February 24th at Selma High School. And this will be an opportunity for uh, families to learn more about what's happening in our schools, specifically the new assessment that we have uh, this spring and also the Literacy Act that was passed um, by the legislators earlier, um, uh, well, last session. Um, and just a time to really get engaged about what's happening and what's needed within our schools. We'll share information about our academies of academic excellence and uh, volunteer opportunities and that type of thing. Um, now we were going to have it on the 25th, but that's a council meeting and I had to strong arm my people because I told them I'm inviting the city council. And so we changed the date to Monday the 24th and I know you guys have um, work sessions usually then too, but we hope that you'll be able to make it for at least part of it um, on that evening. Um, and if not, please share the information within your wards um, because we definitely want to have as many parents and family members there as possible so that we can share um, all that's happening and, and the things that we're needing from the community for Selma City Schools. And that's all that I have. And if you all have any questions for me, I'll be more than happy. Thank you so much, <laughs> Dr. Williams. Thank you so much uh, for uh, coming and committing to this. First of all, this month of the fourth, I, I appreciate it. Thank I, I you. appreciate the information and the partnership. Um, the bus drivers that you're needing, you're adding transportation. I don't know if you started yet, but I started seeing a lot of buses. Um, we, buses. we have a lot of buses that are running um, because of either our special needs babies or just because of high needs. Um, okay. We have families that are in crisis um, that we may provide transportation. And we've had more uh, families this year that needed um, emergency transportation. Okay, thank you, because I'm seeing more buses mm -hmm. now, so I do appreciate it. Um, if someone, uh, well, they can't tell me if the radio is on they can't hear me. But I got a text message that the radio is not on and the, oh, okay. news, and the news is on. So let me know what Randy says, because um, this is good information. So thank you for the transportation piece. Um, the school board recognition month is, uh, have you had all your, in, in comes the radio man. Have you had all your uh, programs for this month? For, uh, have you had all your, 
<laughs> Have you had all your programs for this month for the school board? Well, we recognized them at our February, at our January board meeting. That was our, our big time to have them together to recognize them. But the month doesn't end until Friday. And I don't think any of them will be mad if it eases into February. So um, if you get an opportunity to thank them, just send them a note or anything like that, I would really appreciate it. I think we need to go ahead and move forward with a resolution. Okay. Sean, I appreciate it. Summarizing my adopted school, yeah. um, you know, I came to the institute last spring. Yeah, the teachers institute. That. I'm not a teacher, but I love crashing parties. Hey, and welcome to the school. It was a good. It was a good event, yeah. and and that is when I adopted Selma High School. And I thank you all for the institute. Um, the principal and I are working on several things. One of the things we're working on, and and um, I know that I'll have your stamp of approval really quickly when it comes to project this. Uh, is uh, workshop sessions and seminars for partnering with the U.S. Attorney's Office okay. who will uh, supply the funding for this and some of the human resources for this okay. at Selma High School uh, and because that's the school I adopted. Also coming across your desk will be uh, an application we paid for. My teenager who just graduated in May from there, come out. You know, come out. Who, yes. Who harassed you in your office I until know, you right. made a policy not, not change. Not, not, hey, he, was, he wasn't wrong. <laughs> <laughs> he was there every day in your office until you made a policy change yes. because of a teenager. Yes. Well, he wants to come back over oh, there and teach concerning entrepreneur uh, technology. Oh, that and is awesome. It'll come across your desk, I guess, this week or next week. So okay. if you all would please give that kind of consideration. Oh, absolutely. To we, we love having our, our recent graduates come back. That's a great thing. Okay, so that'll be across your desk in the future. The app winners, the three app winners, can you bring them back? Um, sure. Can you bring them to council meeting? I mean, not back, but can you bring them to council meeting? Sure. Uh, we recognize uh, basketball, football, baseball. We recognize all those things. Yeah. We would also uh, like to recognize those who are in technology. Oh, we would appreciate and, that. And Absolutely. Activity. So if you would, we'd like to recognize Absolutely. That. Council, is that okay? I'm saying we. Yes. <laughs> okay. Oh, foot washing. The foot washing you did with the children, that is, that is something to say about the teachers and the staff to take off the, the shoes and the socks of children and then wash their feet. Absolutely. We all know it's also spiritual. Absolutely. So uh, thank you all for that, for doing that to and for children. I do appreciate that. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Councilman Shorty and Councilwoman Thomas. Uh, Williams, I want to thank you for this information. I thank the council know more about the school than we ever in the past. Good. With this, with this quarter update is very helpful to me. Just as I adopted Selma High, I talked to my colleague this morning. Yes. She and I both adopted Selma High. You know, she did for one reason, I did for another. Uh, the reason I did because the principal was a young man that came up on my tutors, and I think he's doing a remarkable job. Absolutely. And I just want to thank you for all this information. Thank you. I appreciate your support. All right. Councilwoman Dixon, I mean, Councilwoman Thomas, let me move on. Uh, Dr. Weedman, I want to thank you for for such a wonderful job that the school is doing. I have two schools I have got. I have got the R.B. Hudson High in Knox. Okay, good. Because both of those schools are in my ward, and a lot of those kids have had a great turnaround with the programs at R.B. Hudson, which I have been going. I, I love the, the way, way, yes, yeah. the way it's been set up, and it, it helps a lot of those, those children now. And y'all put a lot of time in with them. And over at Knox, I just love what Dr. Kirchner is doing. Yes, there. and they're excited about getting yes. started with performing arts. Too. Yes, uh, she, uh, the kids are very excited. Uh, I go to both of them and I see the improvement, I see what's going on, and I, I stay connected with those two schools because, uh, you know, uh, Ms. Curtis has turned She's turning R.B. Hudson around. She's changing those kids because uh, there's so much uh, <coughs> love and passion that she's given them that some of them haven't had. Yeah. And uh, she puts in time, and, and some of them go through some things, and I like where y'all set up, and you get a chance, the kids get a chance to be open. Yes. They get a chance to discuss about what's on their mind, what's they, what they're going through. And I think that is a good thing that is happening, and I think that R. P. Hudson will strive for the best because it has been turned around. Yes, we are making improvements. Yes, 
improvements yes. and moving in the right direction. I see it. I see it. I see it in the kids every day, uh, getting out of school, personality and the, the fights they used to do. Right. They don't do it anymore. And the, the little kids at Knox, all the new changes that are coming over there, the kids and the parents, they're, they're excited. Good. So I, I see, yes, I see in those two schools over here. Thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you for your support. Real quick, uh, uh, thank you, Mr. President. Now, the way I'm saying was working with you all, Dr. Mm -hmm. Diamond, <coughs> a year ago I talked to the principal of Kingston. And uh, they still are. That's, my, that's mm -hmm. what I want to go. And also, since they're talking about Dr., and I got three uh, schools that I adopted, which is Clark. Uh, school discovery and Kingston. So, okay, but anyway, awesome. so we all here trying to get to help out. We really school. appreciate that. That, that support means so much. Um, and you know, anytime you guys want to visit your adopted schools or any of the other ones, please, please uh, make yourself at home. Um, and yes, the YMCA is doing step up this year so again, and we're of course alternating between all of our elementary schools. Um, so it started up in the fall. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Dr. All right. Thank you. All the work that you're doing, and also we've got to Okay. All right, thank you. Thank you, ma'am. All right. So this is a request. Uh, oh, Mrs. Spencer, please come forward. Good evening, Councilman. Good evening. Ladies and gentlemen. Um, uh, my name is uh, Howard Spencer, Mayor Howard Spencer, and I'm a new um, resident here and citizen and uh, at 607 um, Union Street and I have been really happy to participate in uh, cleaning up and around the uh, neighborhood and looking forward to working with the council. Um, my, my main concern was um, about Bird Elementary School. I've met several people walking and touring that place outside that came from other states that came in for reunions and were interested in what was going to happen to Bird. Um, I've approached uh, some people with the superintendent, Mr. Patterson, and they're trying to turn this over, I think, to the city council. And I've talked with uh, other people, and I wanted to show an interest in that school. I wanted to know where we would be with Bird and when it would be coming over to you. Um, my wife and I have a place over in, um, for pottery, she does pottery in Georgia, and they went ahead and used the whole school for pottery and arts and everything. So it wouldn't be closed where people could use and drop stuff off and, and like there's, always, there's already couches and everything behind there. There's already trash building up. I check the uh, air conditioning units every day, make sure they're not being missing. And I just was coming towards, uh, towards uh, the council to see if there was anything coming up on the agenda that the superintendent has turned over uh, or to you and, and will you have any other meetings on that? Well, I'm glad you asked that. They have a meeting tomorrow at 8.30 to discuss Bird School and also Cedar Park. Is, is that open to the public or is that just uh, to council? It's a, it's a school meeting. It's school. our project team. It's, it's not a public meeting. It's just a meeting to discuss facilities and make some decisions about um, how we move forward with facilities. And that's just one of the items that's on the agenda. So that's uh, one of the items. Okay, yeah. that's what I was coming forward today to ask you about. Thank, Thank you for your time. Hold on. Council Don't Benjamin. leave yet. Those, those items, uh, just FYI, those items have been on the agenda for a while and discussion table for quite some time. And uh, even with the transition process from uh, the school board uh, to the city council, when they closed the school, the schools reverted back. And I know this uh, because of several reasons. One of the schools you mentioned is in Ward 4, uh, but for other reasons too. Uh, the schools reverted back already, uh, and you may have missed it. <laughs> and they it's already missed reverted it back to the city. Okay. Once the school board voted, to close those schools and not use them for an educational facility, they reverted back. That's been some time. You may not have even been living in Selma at that time, so you missed it. Okay. So just FYI, that's been on the discussion table for quite some time, and you'll probably get an update from the meeting on tomorrow from one of us. If I'm not there, Councilwoman Jackson, I know, will be there, and Councilwoman Thomas was invited on last night to attend if I can't make it. And so that, you'll get some details from that concerning that and I know this uh, the school that you're talking about most is in Ward 3 
and there's been deep, deep discussion on that school about investorship. Okay, thank you very so much. I, I just need to know that I had talked to Ms. Jackson about how we're interested in taking over that school. Okay. And I was going to relay that information, Mr. Spencer, that I made you aware of that it is not um, in our possession. We haven't taken keys. Um, we are not, though it has reverted back. Um, at last I spoke with the uh, attorneys in December. Um, it had not been turned back um, over to us, and I did speak with um, Attorney Woody Jones right before they were their contract was still close, and he stated that they were going to look into the matter. I'll be present at the meeting tomorrow. Okay. Mr. President made me aware of last evening, and so I have your name and number. I'll give you a call and let you know any information, but we do have several investors that are looking into it, and, and you want to, and I'll make all of you all aware. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you, Mr. Thompson. Any other questions? Any other questions? All right, thank you. Thank you. Mr. Thompson? Good afternoon, City Council. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Uh, I'm going to um, not be too long. I have uh, Ray Hall up here. This is information which I'm going to pass you all out is regarding the cave-in of the riverfront park and I know you all wanted to have some information in regards to what the situation was down there and coming up with the remedy in regards to trying to proceed with moving forward in regards to getting this taken care of and I will let Ready to come on speak to you all on that matter. I'm going to use the microphone here. Um, <clears throat> Y'all look on the second two pages of the pictures that I took with my drum. And I'm not an expert on the thing, I've only crashed it twice. Um, anyway, uh, that the pictures were the, the aerial, the first one was an aerial photo was taken January 10th. I think if the second page is I flew that drone down in the hole down there. And I'm uh, mighty brave to do that, I can tell you right now. Uh, and where I got the red arrow on this one, the big red arrow. Y'all will look, there's something I've never seen uh, in Selma. This is, this is my 40th year of being an engineer here in this city. We have the underground tunnels, and they were probably put in in the 1890s uh, to help with the yellow fever epidemic, but their, their sides are straight up brick and then they're arched on the top. <laughs> this is a perfectly round, it almost looks like a pipe, but it's made out of brick. I've never seen that. It's about 48 inches in diameter. Uh, I took a, a drone up this afternoon, and I've got a photo here that I took uh, to see if the hole had gotten any worse in the past 18 days. It hadn't gotten very much worse, and I know you took a, a video or something of it the other day. It's been like that since January the 10th that, I, that I'm aware of. What, what we've given you is a cost estimate to come in and um, we'd have to replace, I'm, I'm estimating about 100 feet of that underground drainage structure. And it's a, I, I had to make an assumption because I wasn't gonna get down in that hole and measure it. But it looks like it's about a 48 inch pipe. And what we would do is put uh, a man, basically a manhole on each end and then replace that pipe. Uh, we're also going to have to replace those stairs that go down there. Uh, Y'all have been, have been down there, they're not falling the hole now. Yeah. Uh, and you've got some lights and some wires, in fact you got a wire dangling down in the hole now and some lights. We're going to have to take them, put those, remove them, do the work and then put them back and then we're going to have to, to fill it in and plant some grass uh, I may end up putting some rip right down there if y'all want to do that. Um, $110,200, that, that obviously includes the engineering. Um, I know in the past, uh, in the previous administration, uh, sometimes we would use, I see Ms. Wade here, the, uh, what is that called, the gasoline tax monies, I think that's what y'all call it. 
and the attorney, uh, who's now the judge, Judge Nunn, the city attorney, he would always get me to write a letter and he would look at it. If it was on a it was drainage on a street, it was eligible to be used for those funds. I just want to make that point. I know y'all, if you got to spend that kind of money, you got to figure out where it's coming from. And I don't know where you got it. I'm going to go. Also, how about the tourism account? Tourism account? Well, I'm going to get with the. Uh, this way and find out exactly how much. I know we have a lot of obligations on the, the tourism, so we may not be able to utilize and cover the total amount, but, but it I should be a partial, it should be able to be matched we'll, we'll in regards to it. Okay. Thank you. Councilwoman Benjamin. Thank you. That was wonderful. My hand was up. It looked out. Planning and development is here, so I'm glad to yeah. see you. Uh, was about the tourism account. That was one of the reasons why he <coughs> um, um, Mr. Hall, <coughs> I visited this hole the first time you visited this hole, yeah, which I, I think was right. last summer or last yeah, spring. Yeah, I didn't take a picture of it then, didn't have my Yeah, so I heard about it and I, I wanted to come see for myself. Somebody was like, there's a tunnel under there and it's falling in and I had to go see uh, for myself. It wasn't as large as this is no, now. Not back then. Uh, not back then. So to to you, Mr. Thompson, and to you, uh, our engineer, that was some time ago. And the longer we wait, this may get larger, and this amount of money oh, may, may double. This was last summer or spring when I was out there. Yeah, you're not uh, right. And so here we are now, some months and months later. We're, we're into uh, we're almost in the spring again. So this is getting bigger and bigger. It was not like this when I was, I was able to go down the steps and peek in. I wouldn't walk down the steps right now. Okay. No, yeah. right. So, so it's, got, it's gotten worse. We can't, we can't keep waiting on cave-ins. We can't keep waiting on cave-ins to happen to, to fix this stuff. So bottom line, Mr. Hall, I saw all this and I see all your right. When do we need to start on this? And, and, and Madam Treasurer is going to tell us where to find the money. We can get, you can get started right away. Yeah. Um, it's over fifty thousand dollars, obviously. So you, know, you got to figure it out. Finally, uh, everybody who who can work on this is in place and ready. Is what you're saying? Well, you have to. We have to draw up the uh, drawings and mm -hmm. set a set of specifications and bid documents to make sure everybody's bidding on the same thing. Okay. Uh, that yeah. hasn't been done yet. That can be done real quick. Okay. This is, this is a good example as to put the gasoline tactics used for um, issues such as this. <clears throat> and I think there was a rush to deny the gasoline tax because uh, it was perceived that uh, council people would use it all up when we all have similar problems that we have war. I, for one, don't mind reverting back the division of the gasoline tax to take care of this. This is a major problem. And I think it would not be a major problem if every council people supported that initiative to take care of this. And Ms. Wade, you can tell us what's in the gasoline, the balance of the gasoline tax. I'm thinking 24, maybe 30,000 would be used by my colleague in a more separate. No, so, I didn't use so, that. So what's the balance of the gas tax? The, the cash balance? Yes. I can tell you what it was as of December, just because I don't have it right now. Well, why should you look for that? This is, this is no tax on no individual. It's just something that's a matter of fact, y'all. That the gas tax has always been used for emergency cases and anything that happened around the city, regardless of what water was in. And this council at the last people chose to divide it because we all have major power issues in our war. But as I look at this, this is the main problem, y'all, because that's where the public gathers. And, and, and God forbid if some of our children go down there and have has to fall into this uh, this cave in. I would say let's do the right thing and let's relinquish the gasoline tax that was divided. And let's make sure that there's enough money to take care of this issue. Right okay, mm -hmm. I think before I go to Councilwoman Thomas, I mean Councilman Boleyn first, then Councilwoman Thomas. Uh, I think you have a recommendation that you, you like. Let's go to Ms. Boleyn. 
possible um, to find the site? I didn't know if it was possible, um, Mr. Hall, but if we could um, do a contract separately for the, the design and engineer phase, that way we can move forward with that portion and he can pay it directly. I, and we can get that approved tonight to move forward and that can come out of um, special project. In the meantime, we can come back to court council where the remainder of the contract is executed. That's okay. okay. Let's put a motion on the floor. Do we have a motion on the floor to go in on the design phase to move forward? Is that okay. Yeah, I said 15,000. Okay, we have a motion by Councilman Short, second by Councilwoman Jackson for discussion. I think I've seen Councilman Boleyn, Councilwoman Thomas, and Councilwoman Major. Then call for the vote. Yeah, the question is uh, how does this tie into the, the coal and the asphalt there right by the old Major Rumbles? If you look in that hole, it's a huge cavernous abyss as well. They've got to be connected somehow or another because they're right there together and it's gotten progressively larger over the years, even though the asphalt holes were that big. But the hole itself, if you look down in there, is pretty large. You can stick a 10 foot stick in there and just keep going. Right under, the brick, under, the... under the asphalt right there as you as you're going up the hump and get into major oh the old parking lot used to be used by major oh, I don't know where you're talking about that. Yeah, it's 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 uh, the it's caddy corner, probably, but it's still and, and that's not that far back. No, so you look on my drawing, I was I actually showed my manhole up on top of it. It's my proposed manhole. So right. We, we may be able to. I just think it warrants looking into that because that's going to fail at some point. The very Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's it. We get into what I design. We we'll probably scoop back and, and take that into account. Okay. Cool. You're, you're correct. That that pipe or that brick pipe goes no heads north back right. up parallel with Franklin Street. Right. It has that weird angle to it. And, I, and I'm pretty sure it drains a lot of drainage on Water Avenue. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Councilman Ben. Councilman Jackson called for the motion. Okay, I'm sorry. I, oh, he skipped me, but I didn't say anything. I know what he was saying. He went to Thomas and spoke to Sierra, I don't mind. Sierra, <laughs> well, I'm going to speak mine. Sierra, I don't have to up. say. Gas tax, gas tax is used uh, for uh, infrastructure, like when you have a serious problem, which uh, for the first time I ever used and I did not use, but 15,000, 15, 11,000, and 4,000 uh, for a major problem in my ward. That was my first time using gas tax since I've been sitting here. And the reason I had to use that, I had no other way to go because all of my funds were gone. And I had to take care of a serious problem in my ward. And that, that is what gas tax is used for. All right, thank you. Councilman Jackson and Councilman Johnson. Right there. All right. And we'll stick with a motion on the floor. Um, I wanted to uh, just offer also uh, um, and piggyback on what Councilman LaShore said concerning we need to take care of this and, and on what end we should. Now, my $13,000 has gone inside of a contract that was voted on tonight for cave in and potholes. However, we have money on the way. Um, in March or April uh, for bogies, and I would say um, subtract the whatever it is, 90,000, 95,000 from that before we do anything else. We'd, I, I would say to the council, let's consider subtracting that 95,000 or 90,000, whatever the difference is from that. And uh, of course, the engineer would have to tell us if that's even feasible for him uh, when the oil lease monies return again in March or April. Um, Mr. Thompson, prior to the meeting starting, you actually brought um, this up to the council members that were present and discussed um, just what Councilman Bowling stated that um, actually this hole ran directly into the other hole. And what I want to make sure that's correct, Mr. Hall. And so what you're saying is you're going to take care of both of these in this project? Oh, I mean, we'll, we'll probably have to extend that pipe back. But if you look on the drawing where you see where I show a, a round circle at the top, um, it's, it's almost to that. Uh, I'm sure what we're going to do. Let's see. Mm -hmm. This one's where it's going to 
look back up here, that's almost, you know, I, I, I wasn't going to fix it right where the hole was, but I went downstream from the hole and then back upstream. I just need to take that back about 15 or 20 feet. Are you pointing, can you point to the spot that Councilman Bolin was happening? Can you point to that? Is that included? It doesn't show, but it's, but it's, it's right it's back It's beyond that piece? Well, actually, it's, it'd be, if that's the parking lot right there, right? Yeah, it's, 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 so it's right here? It's right here. So if it was on there, about how many feet away was that? That's what I was going to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. So about how many feet? I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to that. I'm going to have to write back to
Councilman Boleyn? Yes. Councilman Youngblood? Councilman Jackson? Yes. Councilman Benjamin? Yes. Councilman Randolph? Councilman Lashore? Yes. Councilman Thomas? Yes. Councilman Johnson? Yes. Unanimous vote to start on Facebook. Okay, I want to thank Mr. Rayhoff. Uh, my next um, project, and I'm going to uh, continue along, this is another uh, tourism item in which I'm looking to present. The facade right next to the Welcome Center. Yes, sir. Um, I'm looking to do a project between these two, these two facilities. Um, with an amount not to exceed $5,000 for both projects. And uh, my intention is to get both of these done prior to Jubilee, being that that's a prominent time around the city. And <clears throat> we had gotten, um, if you look at the second one, which is inside of the Interpretive Center, um, Congresswoman Sewell brought to mention a lot of the uh, sheetrock inside of the facilities that needs to be replaced and um, repaired and it needs it like immediately. There are also a couple of other cosmetic things that can wait but the immediate issue is the inside of the facility. There's a baseboard in there next to the door that has some very dark looking stuff on the wood that we want to make sure that we get this taken care of, and I want to move on it as quickly as possible, both in regards to not to exceed $5,000 for both, well, it was 10000 total. 10000 Yes, and, and the, regarding the Cahaba furniture facade, the wood, the, if, the if, you, if you ever get a chance, and you all get a chance, take a look, the bracing behind that building has collapsed, a couple of the beams have collapsed and knocked the boards outward in which one of them eventually is going to fall into the street if we don't get something done to them. Which one? The this Cahaba one. furniture facade. Yeah, so um, this, um, what we're looking to do is we're looking to replace the wood and paint the front of the facility and stabilize the boards that are located behind there. No, and get 10, that 10,000 10, total. You know, it's under 50,000 dollars deal. Yeah. I'm going to go ahead and put a motion on the floor I'll second. that we move forward with it, have a motion on the floor second by Councilman Johnson, now open for the second. Yeah, Mr. President, I, I, you know, I, I agree with Mr. Thompson. These facades really are a danger to the public. As a matter of fact, Mr. President, last year, there was some people walking down the street. They went out there in pants. One, as a matter of fact, one of these panels fell down. And then the panel next to it was about to come down. Thank God nobody was hurt. I was wondering when the city was going to deal with this. I was talking about this with things that the city was going to invest this and get this fixed so the public would not be at home. Okay, all right. We got Councilman Foley and Councilman Ben. The Interpretive Center, this, uh, these last two photos or so, that's from the Interpretive Center inside? The inside. At the and third floor? Actually, it looks like worse if you see them in color. And I, I, ask any of you all if you all can go in and take a look as soon as you walk in the building if you look over to the left hand side coming in the door it it needs to be done and we what, really need to represent our city better than that with the amount of people. but the question i guess since the building has not been that it's not that old it hasn't been that long since it's renovated why are we having such substantial problems that was a part of the first phase that was done on the building and like this Paul mentioned there's about a year to warranty on certain things, but right. after well, the that quality time, of construction should be better than the last a year. I mean, the guy just making it go a year, then we no, don't need to hire no, them no, ever no, again. Exactly. exactly. This, is, this is not on the upper floor, this is on the bottom floor? That's on the bottom floor. So and the issue is when you deal damage? with the older building, it's possibly what, and I got this from another engineer who told me, there's an area where the conjoining build is conjoined in between the two that because of the oldness of the building and the way the spouts are set up, the water some kind of way can run down and it's condensation which is causing the inside and when the 
sheetrock was put on there, there's a certain kind that um, if you use this mildew and mold can't resistant. resistant. But I don't think that was used during that time. So ultimately, it has to be repaired. And not even only on that side, there's also the, the side next to the windows. If you get a chance and you take a look on the outside, there's a small crack along the edge of the building, right beside the brick. If you go through there, you can see where rain or whatever goes down there. And it's not from the rain that's not getting in there, but it seems like it's condensation that is causing the issues that we're having occur. So is there a plan to repair that issue that's creating the condensation? So we just put sheetrock up and we get the same problem in three years. And we really well, have well, the issue I think with the sheetrock was the type that we used, utilized okay. within that time. And the usage of uh, different types as well as what's going to have to happen with that outside. And I did talk to the Google Mills about what it would take in regards to do that. It's going to have to be a seal around the basement area of the interpretive center that's going to be done. And that's going to be a project that we're going to have to find some federal funding to be able to cover the cost for that because it's going to have to be completely sealed down here. And if any of you all get a chance to go down there, um, you can uh, you can smell the moisture in the basement of the Turner Center. And if you go get a chance, um, go visit that uh, issue that one of the contractors did tell me there's a type of humidifier that actually goes into the HVAC that will uh, help. So I won't say it's going to fix it, but they said it will help. And they're um, supposed to be giving me some numbers and some information in regards to that as well, which I should have that before Jubilee as well. Thank you. Thank you. Like I said, I'm glad to see you. It's been a while. Yes. Um, and because it's been a while, we have something now that needs to be done and immediately. Uh, I'm sure it started as a dot that somebody missed and then the dot got bigger and, and, and all of those things. Who is in charge of the process of going around? Because I know you're responsible for uh, probably certain welcome center, interpret center, I don't know which, which do is anymore. But um, you're responsible for some of that, but who's responsible for finding these things out before they become emergencies and cost us so much money? Like in this picture, am I seeing mold in picture number three? Uh, you, the picture you gave. You got it. Is that mold? I don't know. And well. these are cracks that look like um, they started small and they became bigger. And now they're noticeable, very noticeable. Um, Congress on the tool sent a lot of money into this. And uh, she was on the floor for this, fighting for this. And we all know how the story started about the interpretive centers. And I'm, I'm so happy that it finally landed in Selma. So we gotta, you said, you said something in your um, statement that we gotta do better. This is not a good representation. You are correct. So what is, what is the problem? And what is the solution, and how can we help? And we, I've been meeting with the Park Service as well. This is, um, there are several issues that go along with this one in particular, but ultimately there should and probably needs to be maintenance plans in place for all I'm sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm for, I'm uh, to have a maintenance but, plan for all, all the buildings, buildings need to have a maintenance plan with the village to doing I mean, I that me. process. Um, maintenance plan, you brought a maintenance plan. There should be a maintenance plan somewhere. Can you please pull it and give us a copy? Can you please get with the uh, with public buildings and, and give us a copy of what the maintenance plan is? I'm serious. I know it's funny because all the buildings are falling yes. apart and it seems so funny yes. and, and it's just sometimes it gets satirical, but I'm serious about it. Can you please pull the maintenance plans? And because we keep coming to the juncture of an emergency. Yes. 
if an emergency. And so what is the maintenance plan? Like the regular maintenance plan, like I gotta get an oil change right now. I'm negligent on the oil change. I know this because I can look right there on the, the dashboard. The park service is uh, concerned as well. And that goes, it goes in regards to everything from the air conditioning to the, I, I know you all have noticed that we're having a lot of HVAC problems over there at the Turbo Center. That is an issue from not having, I don't know how to change filters <laughs> and go over there and do those types of things, but I do know that they, there's a set way that certain things can be done to where it's contingent and put in place to where it can be repaired and taken care of on a consistent basis. Can you so, please uh, work with that on that end? Uh, I, I, you are not publicly building, but you are planning and developing. So all these things should work together. Every department should work together, including us. Let us know what we can do on our end. The building that was next to uh, where Phoenix Park is now, there was a building there, remember? <laughs> and that building was destroying the business next to it because it was connected to it. So it, yes. to not destroy that building because it took some time for somebody to notice, we had to tear the entire building down to save the antique shop. And you're saying the condensation is coming between the walls and all of those things. And we're at a point where we got to make a decision on what, I don't know if a basement seal is going to do it. The park service, and we're going to have another meeting with them as well, they have noticed the problem and they are trying to work to put some funding. They feel we need a project manager for that facility. Is kind of what, yes, but that, it, it's kind of a little bigger than just that. So I am working with them consistently in regards to us trying to put things in place to prevent these things. And I know if you all look at the out the doors at the interpreter center, there are certain things that we have to have a certain plan in order to do in regards to making sure that we get these things taken care of. But when you have a meeting with the park services, do you mind inviting our public Chair, our representative, uh, Councilwoman Thomas, so she can report back to the Alright, roll call. President Bruce? Yes. Councilman Bowling? Yes. Councilwoman Youngblood? Councilwoman Jackson? Yes. Um, I want to put this for the record. Make sure it's a licensed contract. No. Licensed. Yes. Now, um, let me know if it needs to be state licensed because I will have to add that to the uh, yes. proposal as well. It should be. I'm sorry. Oh. Oh. Okay. Oh. Oh. I'm going to ask the audience, please keep it quiet. We're up here trying to conduct business. Anyone that doesn't have a state license doesn't have a warrant. So in two months, if it's more mold and if the sheep rock falls off the wall, we can't do anything about it if it happens the next day. So we want to make sure they're licensed, okay. not well, the city of Selma licensed, license, but an actual license, professional. Okay, well I will okay. add that to the proposal as well. Excuse me. And also voids the equipment because it's not a licensed contractor doing this installation right. work, therefore warranties on the right. here. It's all in your case is null and void as well. Yeah. All right. Uh, Sorry, the new one. Councilwoman Benjamin? Yes. Councilman Brandon? Councilman Bashore? Yes. Councilwoman Thomas? Yes, and uh, I want to thank you for coming because uh, this year on front, on Raw, I've seen a lot of people, I've seen some fail too, so I'm glad that uh, you, you decided to come forward. Councilman Johnson. Yes, but Mr. Thompson, please find us some money. So we were coming to these emergency homes, we're going to need some funding fast. All right, the grants are going to be ready. All right, thank you. Mr. Thompson, what's your name, sir? Okay, lastly, um, is regarding the Wi-Fi project in which I had brought previously. This is regarding the Delta Regional Authority grant and regarding payment of the actual um, the contractor for the uh, project that was started by the Selma Redevelopment Authority and was picked up by the city and it has currently gotten to the point where it is now. We've received the
funding back from Delta Regional Authority regarding the work that has been done and ultimately what we need to do is pay the vendor. But being that the contract was agreed between the Selma Redevelopment Authority at that time, it needs to, in order for the city to pay it, we need an approval in order to pay the, these funds out. Also, uh, Mr. Yeah. Thompson, if, if I'm correct, this um, Wi-Fi grant goes back to 2016. Yes. And I know the time is of essence that is about to run out. Almost critical because we have about another forty-five thousand dollars that um, if we don't spend uh, in the next couple of weeks, we're going to be in threat of losing. All right, council members, I know we've been going back and forth with this uh, Wi-Fi grant. I'm going to go ahead and put a motion on the floor that we move forward for the pavement. Uh, because this is jeopardizing if people grant it. That's what we're moving forward. Right, right. have a motion. I put a motion accepted by council members and the council council members. Any follow-up discussion? Yeah. Council members. Was the accountant present? It was uh, 31 uh, No, I made the account that the money's coming from. Yes, uh, Delta Regional is saying that they, it's been paid already. The city has received the funds from the uh, grant. And we're going to set it now. We can set it from that now. Yes. Okay, thank okay. you. Okay. All right, vote so to make the payment. Delta Regional. No, you said the cap. The cap is being paid. I have to check and verify exactly where it was put, but it came into the cell phone. Would you let us know, please? Oh, yes. All right, roll call. President Bullard? Yes. Councilman Bowling? Yes. Councilwoman Youngblood? Councilwoman Jackson? I'm going to say yes, uh, because um, this is something that's done by the SRA, and um, this funding has been brought to the city. But I say it gradually because we've had some issues with this vendor as um, well. I don't, I see the scope of services, but I don't see the contract and start date and end date. Um, but I'm hopeful, Mr. Thompson, know that all of this has been done and because it's SRA money. Actually, that's just being, um, we're just being a go to or go through um, um, for, the, for their agency. I'm, I'm going to vote yes, gradually. Make sure you put all of that in the notes. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations. Councilor Benjamin? Yes. Councilor Randolph, Councilor Michelle? Yes. Councilwoman Thomas? Yes. Councilor Johnson? Yes. All right, thank you, Councilman. Any other questions for Mr. Thompson? All right. Y'all better, better ask for it. Mr. Thompson, just uh, so uh, the Barrett Road training project is moving forward, waiting for the audit to come back in order to get money clarified and get some things figured out there so we can move forward with this but we can start the bid process once the audit comes back in yes the design the work in. was completed uh two weeks ago and ultimately the audit is what we need to secure the funding from abm okay and once that takes place um it can be bid okay and miss wade you had it where i decided to spend twenty thousand dollars to pay the first two years on that note yes. The Barrett Road drainage project. Um, I'll, I'll make a note of it. Yes, ma'am. Something we did in a meeting, I guess, last year sometime when this first came up to ensure that it was funded for the first two years. And as far as loan payments are coming out, coming support. after all of Correct. Okay. $10,000 per year with that, right? Thomas. Thomas. That's correct. That's the least we can do to help with our own water problem. Councilman Thomas, Councilman Bishore, Councilman. I just want to do a follow up on the, the brownfield, the yeah. landing. Yeah. Uh, have you got the report back on the, the, the second? The, the second phase is I haven't received any second phases yet, but yeah. there have been, they have done yours, Stuart McKenzie, and um, yes, the uh, motor pool area. They're uh, in the process of getting that one completed. We just have to get some authorizations on regards to the county to get that one completed, but they have completed it and they have the information they're just doing their due diligence and putting the booklet and the manual together in regards to it and the important portion of that is once the second phase is complete and 
if something is found or if it's not, we will be eligible for cleanup funding immediately on any project that we are go undertaking. Okay, let me ask you this question. If, if there, hopefully it's not, but uh, do we have to come up with the matching? Uh, do we have to do a grant for that? Do you have to apply for a grant to do that cleanup? Yes, there, okay. it, it is competitive, but I think it's 70 and 25. I'll have to confirm the amount on that portion mm -hmm. for the cleanup okay. grant, but I do so know that uh, I think so. But I will confirm that. Um, but yes, uh, it will, will be immediately helpful. And so under some circumstances, there is a forgiveness aspect as well. And me um, speaking with the uh, contracted company that we actually work with in regards to our Brownsville, under certain circumstances, there's a forgiveness portion where we may not even have to pay the damage. Yeah, because I just wanted to. Um, the principal at night, you know, I try to keep that junkyard <laughs> cleaned up and, you know, she asked me, have we got the, the second phase yet, the report on it, and I told her, I didn't know that, but I will let her know that we, we are in the process. Of yeah, we are working on that, because that's going to be critical keys to the development of all of these areas that we've chosen around the city, because once we uh, clean them up and they will be able to be utilized for something within the area. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman Thomas. Councilman Thomas, I want to take this opportunity to thank you for all your hard work. Uh, it may seem slow at times, but I know you're working back a little easier, trying to get as much resource to our city as possible. I want to take this opportunity to thank you here. And, uh, Mr. Hendricks, I'm on the mayor for having to get that plant street bike that put back up. Uh, I was told that they were out there working today trying to get that light for the citizens of the North Six. Hopefully that uh, light will be, uh, will be restored and you can easily see and have access to the plant street ex exit off of Highway 41. So once I leave here, now, now that it is dark, I'm going to go by and make sure the light is up. But even as it, if it isn't up, I just want to thank you for being helpful in this, trying to get this uh, resolved. Please thank you. Right. Thank you. <laughs> Mr. Thompson, speaking of lights, and then I'll tell you why I had my hand up. Speaking of lights, though, it's getting darker and darker in the city. It, and it almost appears that lights are going out in sections, like, uh, frequently, once a week, maybe. Uh, can you please find out what might be going on? Concerning our lines with our outbound power, lights. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's lights, lights are going out instead of coming on. You need to find that out for me. Yes. I, I would like to complete our project. You have been working on for a while, the, the, the market on yes. the corner of First um, yes. and Franklin. I'd like to complete that. And uh, if you could help me concerning uh, the dollars concerning the fresh fruit market. <laughs> I would appreciate it and if we could as soon as possible meet on that. Um, if you have the time this week, I'm available up until Thursday. I'm available all week next week. Um, if you have time, if we can go ahead and, and get that part finished. And, and thank you for helping me thus far on it. You're welcome. And I, I would like to, uh, for us to get together, I would like to get somebody from the state regarding the ADM over here as well. Let me make some phone calls. Uh, we will see if we can pull that together because I know it would really help really us to kind of get things kicked off as well as they have funding as well. So we may need to uh, utilize that as well because we're actually, the recycling grant is coming up which we're getting ready to submit on that behalf as well. So I need to call and see what we can get done. Yes. All right, Councilman Johnson. Yeah, Mr. Johnson, uh, yes, thank sir. you. Um, three and a half years ago, we voted uh, on the pond, which used to be the song of our Selma, Park yes. Selma. Yes. Um, I'm not sure if the council been out there recently, but uh, you had to do uh, some time, and there's a lot of work been done out in that park. Yes. Uh, we voted to name the park after the first black mayor, which is James Perkins Jr. Yes. Um, 
And I talked with you recently trying to see how it's coming. Uh, yes. Could you give the other council members the update of what's going on with the bar? Yes, I've spoke with um, the uh, the company, the private company that's actually in the process of completing um, the facade changes on the front as well as the uh, other portions regarding the rails that's going to be done. They uh, gave me a timeline of approximately around three to four weeks right now, depending on the weather and a couple of conditions, but everything is looking well in regards to getting that completed. So I would thank you all, and we are going to come back eventually, though, because of some stabilization issues that I want to get brought to the forefront regarding that part. But um, this initially, we're um, glad to have all of that stuff getting ready to come to a close. So it won't be very long now. We will have all of that in here and install. Um, the, I think there was an agreement that you will go back up with that structure. Yes, that's, that's going to be, that is a part of the other portion as well and I, I was kind of wanting to get the, the initial stuff kind of completed in regards to um, the pavilion or like thereof that's, um, that's going to be relocated with back within that area and the stabilization of the palace that it sits on in regards to that and we've been um, reviewing a lot and we're pretty close to that, but as soon as we get that signage portion completed, we're going to move steadfast on trying to get Thank you, that executed. Thank you, Mr. Thompson. Right, not the committee report, and close it tomorrow. Councilman Johnson, regular. Uh, I don't have no a report from the Recreation Department award, then uh, I, I saw Councilman uh, Woman Jackson mention about uh, some of them, uh, I think, about the track. But right now, I'm not sure you make an update to me on that because I was out on the other But right now, for as I know, that the track is uh, unfit to run on right now because we don't want the liability to sell. I gave a, you know, a call to the athletic director and I told her we don't want the liability responsibility of any child practicing on that on that uh, track and uh, twist the ankle and things because the deputy is in bad shape. Uh, uh, he talked to Terry. Um, I met with the contractor out there. He said it would probably be in March for to get an opportunity to start resurfacing the track. And it's going to be uh, rough around $50,000. But I told him that we need that in writing. We don't need just what he said. We need it in writing. And that way we can see where we can go from there. Uh, but uh, uh, baseball season is about to get ready to get crank, cranked up real soon. It won't be long. Uh, but other than that, uh, my coach from Mars is Ward 8. Uh, you, know, you know, I understand that. And not just you all, with the garbage. The garbage is coming in into our city uh, from, from the county area, which I, I've seen it myself like twice. And I really was hurt from the person I saw dropping the garbage. But we're going to talk about that on February 18. Uh, I'm having a ward meeting at February 18 on, on the Tuesday uh, at 5 p.m. at Kingston Elementary School. So I'm asking everybody to plead to attend. And the topic will be potholes and garbage. So we can, again, uh, we will have a um, um, ward meeting on February 11th, 18 on Tuesday at 5 p.m. in Kingston. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mr. President. I have a question on this report, committee report. Mm -hmm. Would you please ask those who are responsible for track maintenance, give you the track maintenance plan, please, on the track? Okay, I'll do it. I will do that. Thank you. All right, thank you. Good luck. Okay, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> Councilman Bowling. Uh, yes, the Administrative Committee uh, question. Obviously, uh, uh, Major Madison is now our city attorney, so we're going to have a hole in uh, that department needs to be filled. We're going to be serving at the magistrate's office or in the court system. So I'm, I'm going to talk about that. Uh, okay, so I know there's going to be an admin committee responsibility or not. Everybody had a chance to review that document I sent out regarding the uh, request for information. Uh, Major, I guess you haven't received that because you're new and it probably didn't get forwarded over to you when we had the transition between the terms. Oh, I can see it. Okay. I will send you a copy of that. Do you have your contact information available? Uh, card I do. Or anything? I do, uh, Councilman. Yeah. I'm going to send it. You can have it. I'm going to send the entire council. Okay. 
my contact information tomorrow. I was actually still in the process of getting my phone and I have an email address and now access to uh, both. Are you still at the same cell phone number you were at before, sir? Yes. It goes all the way back to our Concordia days working together? 15 years. <laughs> yes, all right, well, I just want to make sure we get a copy of that so you can review it. Uh, and then we can discuss it so we get that thing ready to go and get the citizens easy access. Uh, and again, uh, Mr. President, we can find out if that's going to be a, a committee assignment for the administrative committee to deal with that or not. I guess you'll tell us in a moment. Uh, Ward 1, folks, uh, I'm in the process of trying to find a contractor to work with to get the potholes filled up in our good area. Uh, they are many and plentiful. Uh, Mr. Joe uh, was here a minute ago. Uh, it looks like somebody carpet bombed his street. There he is back there. Uh, just terrible, thin asphalt needs to be replaced all the way through. But we'll do the best we can to get those things remedied based on the money we have available to us. The good folks that live off Midland, that has been cleaned up again for the second or third time since they've been elected. Uh, and no more than 15 minutes after it was cleaned, there was trash in the middle of it. So I, I don't know what to tell you folks, if you guys can't police your own area where you live to make sure people aren't dumping trash, then it's hard for me to do the same. Uh, obviously, it's got to be somebody that's going down that road, so keep your eyes open. If you see somebody, call me, and I'll report it, or call the police chief, call somebody. Let's get somebody picked up on this situation. Uh, if we had our six game cameras we bought and gave the code of force when we first got elected, we'd be able to do something on that, but those have fallen into the abyss like the city money and employees and everything else that has been solved in the three years or so that I've been serving. So, that being said, maybe we get some clarity on all this stuff and move forward, but please, dear God, folks, don't let people throw trash in our ward. Don't let people throw trash in the city. If you see a piece of trash on the ground, even if it's somewhere else, pick it up. I mean, it doesn't take two seconds to pick it up. Just pick it up. I pick it up all the time. I pick it up, pick a bag up, then pick up the other trash, put it in the bag, and throw it away. Just pick it up, folks. Pick it up. It's not somebody else's job. It's your job as a citizen to keep your city clean and to make sure you're marketing your city when tourists come into town or if somebody comes in and wants to do business with us. We can't do business with people outside the community if they walk in here and you see trash everywhere. So pick it up. Thank you, Councilman. Uh, on Tuesday, we will have a public safety committee meeting. Uh, Councilwoman Thomas and I have checked with Councilwoman Youngblood. And one of the issues that we're going to be discussing is the municipal judge position. Uh, we're looking at uh, having an interview process like, uh, like we did with the fire chief and police chief. So if you're interested in uh, being our next municipal judge, Please email me at CoreyBuoy2012 at gmail.com. Again, that's CoreyBuoy2012 at gmail.com. And also, we have a resolution for uh, Congressman John Lewis, but I know Councilwoman uh, Youngblood and Councilman Randolph is not here tonight, and we definitely want to get their signature. So uh, we're looking at probably get it probably about next week or um, before the next meeting, okay? Uh, thank you. Thank you. Right. Councilwoman Benjamin, children and family. Thank you. I want to make sure several times you got the announcement. Uh, we're doing interviews to fill a vacancy at Municipal yeah. Court. You, you got the email address? I don't have We'll pass it to you. Okay. We'll, we'll make sure you get it. You have an email address, right? No, I know somebody came and distracted him when you were making an announcement. He was talking to somebody else. <laughs> we'll get it to him. He's going to um, okay, so the announcements uh, that I made earlier, I will have a date for the 11th Annual Black Man Hill Symposium and the 12th Annual Black History Month, um, Black History Month celebration. Tonight, board for the contract was approved for our facelift. I hope that the attorney has a contract with him tonight. I need to, because the contractor, I just saw him come in. I need to get those signatures on there tonight. So if you would pass that to me, you were only missing President Bowie's signature um, last night. So if you would pass that to me, I don't get these signatures while all these people are in place. And Ward 4, look for phase two or about facelift. Uh, phase one was ditches, ditches, ditches. <laughs> That didn't sound right. It was ditches, 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 and now it's pothole, pothole, pothole. <laughs> Thank you to the council uh, for the appropriation. I appreciate y'all making that vote. Uh, so get ready. Uh, James, you might want to follow me through War Corps because it's going to be so much fun. It's going to be so much fun. You know the Selma Sun, they're going to be around too. So y'all follow me through uh, as we do phase two. Uh, our ward forest facelift, we're done with the ditches, we're moving on to potholes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Councilwoman. Uh, 
and we can't remove all of the things. We move, remove the garbage, but this is a property owner, um, and so we we need code enforcement to ensure that we're not infringing on their rights and to make sure that we're doing things properly. Um, additionally, my number hasn't changed. I give it out. I put it in the newspaper. It's on the website, 334-267-9737. Um, if I don't answer, I'm either in court or on another call. But if I'm in court, where I am, I will text and say I'm in court or on a council meeting, as I've done several times tonight. Please call me uh, back or allow me to call you back. If you have an issue in Ward 3, please do not hesitate to contact me. I'm working diligently on the lights on Union Street um, to get them up and running. I contacted Mr. Carter today <coughs> to determine if it's in fact that the city has um, shut off services to those lights or if the lights are not working because of some type of other electrical uh, problem. So know that I'm working um, hard on your behalf. Um, thank you for attending our meeting on the 15th on, um, what was it, it was the 18th, on Martin Luther King Day, the day we observed Martin Luther King Day. And thank you for allowing me to serve as your council representative. Thank you to all the council members that um, allow me the honor of um, being a leader in Selma City Government with you. Thank you and good night. Thank you, Councilman Jackson. Councilman I would like to say to the citizen of Selma, I want to thank you for allowing me to take part in everything I do as a leader of the city of Selma, because this is our place. This is our home. And we have visitors in. We want uh, our city to strive and look good. We want people to go back and talk about Selma, good things about Selma. Also, this, uh, the month of February will be a busy month me as uh, representing the city of Selma. Also, we will be having uh, February 11th is the legislative day, which uh, we know as elected officials, you go to one government, to the municipality, and meet your, your representatives. Um, I plan to attend, because it's a part of my education training, to get to know uh, some of our elected officials and some things that we can talk about and ask for help for our city. Also, come Thursday, uh, I'm so happy Thursday because I want the, I want the kids to I want my city to be represented. Uh, one of our schools, uh, both of my schools, uh, Knox, uh, are paying to be represented in this contest, which they will pick three posters out of each school and be a part of the other cities that are being in this contest. Because it's good for our kids to take part of this educated. Uh, it helps our children to see how we can connect with the body of government, because you get a chance to go to, to well, KIV in Montgomery, and you get a chance to do other things. So I'm hoping in that uh, Thursday morning, with uh, we're going to put in paper with all of the, the fifth graders that took part of this, and um, oh, President Bowie and uh, whoever the representative is in Payne School will be able, if not, one of the other council will stand to represent Payne School with this uh, because it's, it's good for the city of Selma. And also, I really want to thank uh, Morgan Academy for holding up. They have really been good cleaning that stadium up. They do it every Saturday. The group, uh, they are there every Saturday morning early, seven o'clock, going through the block hall, cleaning trash, and they have made that commitment to the city of Selma that they will continue to do that. And I want to thank them personally. I appreciate what you're doing. You're showing uh, community leadership. Uh, good job and good night, citizens right. of Selma. Thank you, Councilwoman Thomas. Right, we're for so move, Mr. President.